Well, sorry about uh, where I'm doing the video or whatever. It's just uh, where I've been. Um, I'm just waiting basically for the um, uh, the value village. I don't know if uh, you guys get value villages where you are. It's, you know, like a used uh, store for profit kind of thingamajig. But I'm just going to go and take a look at their books and hats, hopefully. And actually, hopefully um, cannibalize some old games. Uh, yeah, I'd like to get some uh, different size poker chips for the... Um, uh, the Axis and Allies game upstairs, just to kind of differentiate um, the five and the ones, just like it's just slightly different size. So that way, when I'm looking at a stack or whatever, rather than the color, it just helped me a little bit better, I think. And I also want to go to the dollar store to grab some, uh, I'm going to make some uh, uh, play aids for the Axis and Allies things. Uh, the way they have the, um, I don't know what the heck they call them production point things or whatever uh, uh, i'm like are you if you think i'm putting all the freaking eight different freaking powers on or seven whatever on once it's not happening in the, it's just too constrained for me i was like no i'm not gonna it's gonna drive me up the tree anyway so i've been waiting for that um for it to open uh i'm not a big uh i just not i haven't caught the bug yet or i'm just not into it yet is um uh doing e-reading so um yeah has it been you know getting uh, well i'm always interested in the logistics uh part of it i would love to be able to figure out how to pronounce the freaking word properly logisticians or something logist logistics i can get that bit then lo logisticians i'll have to go and uh, listen to someone say it over and over again in my head so that way i can get it in there uh, but anyways, yeah, so this is part of, you know, the International Encyclopedia of the First World War, like I've mentioned a bazillion times. That, this th And it's a living, breathing resource. It's expanding and adapting as it goes along. And it's, they, like I said, in uh, uh, when we did a thing about this on the live stream way back when, uh, this, uh, the person there, when I was uh, listening to it on the Nebula website there, um, the podcast, when they were interviewing the um, the guy from uh, Freiburg University, I do believe, um, uh, he was saying like we're trying to use all available resources, not just you know print. Uh, you, you know here, go to here, go to external whatevers. Like I, oh, that's what I did. Trust me, man. I have uh, you. You won't believe what's coming uh, coming up the pipeline for books and stuff. <laughs> Anyways. Like, like I said, keep my head down. Whew. It's, uh, anyways, look at this bit. Oh, it's, I've only got like about three paragraphs in. And there's more freaking stuff than you can shake a stick at. But look at this. And I went, oh my God, I never viewed it that way. And I was thinking, it just, uh, you know, alluded to some of the comments William Aarons is making about, um, about war over time and so on and so forth. And just uh, uh, way back when, when he was mentioning about the, the Argonne Forest and how it, well, in quotes, because there was nothing left of the trees and anything and, you know, and so on and so forth. And just the mass destruction and, and this industrial aspect of this war of just this... Uh, you know, production, consumption, yeah. Welcome to my crazy loud fridge. I, every summer, I keep, I'm, I'm shocked this fridge is still here. Uh, mind you, it gives me watery gifts every day right there. <laughs> Anyways, I'm going to read it, read it out to you because it just reminded me of Sun Tzu. Uh, it says, war, well, might, war might well be considered a man-made disaster and it provides special challenges for logisticians. And, uh, yeah, I just was like, holy smokes, guys, uh, or myself, sorry. But then afterwards, I was like, yeah, I want to share it with you guys. Um, just knocked my socks off. Uh, oops, I shouldn't. Well, that kind of is a bit ironic, isn't it? I didn't mean it that way. But um, so here you go. I'll sh you know, put something a bit more or whatever so you can see. But uh, like a bit more um, entertaining, <laughs> if you want to call it that. But, uh, yeah, I was just like, it just m reminds me of Sun Tzu and the fact of... Um, you know, he was always saying, you've got to, like, avoid war. Uh, you've already lost the battle kind of thing. or already lost if you have to fight. And, uh, and it was, now I'm starting to think about this natural disaster. And, oh, just the whole, uh, you know, yeah, I just, uh, I'm going to, okay, well, I'll get off into a quickie uh, philosophical and then zip, zip back to World War One. But, yeah, I mean, you know, I just rewind this and I keep thinking oh my god like Putin or everybody else myself uh, kings queens you know you name it we all had to you know crying little babies at one point had to have our bums wiped and 
so on and so forth. And I, I understand, yes, I mean, the collective, whatever. You know, we get lots of things done because we both, everyone agrees, like, what the number two means and so on and so forth. But, I mean, even rewind that back millions of years and it's no such thing as any of basically practically anything that I, I look around at and view as reality and you know it's it's all per, it's just bizarre how reality in some in some ways obviously not I mean if uh, you know gravity disappears and so on and so forth strange things are going to happen to me but um, you know big chunks of what I view as reality and everybody else does is just a perception it's just freaky weird Anyway, so we'll go back to this because this is where I really need to get my head back uh, into this. But, uh, yep, okay. Off I go. Uh, well, not really. I've got about another 45 minutes, so I'll do this, that, and the other thing. Brush my teeth and stuff. Okay, see you later.